inspired by the novel of the same name by Philip K. Dick, Ubik the video game takes the player to a dark futuristic world. Just what era we find ourselves in is unclear. Perhaps it's the year 2019. Perhaps it's a time that never existed at all. These are ideas that fascinated Philip K. Dick. Bringing this cult universe to a video game immediately raised several very difficult questions. How could Ubik be translated into images? How could Philip K. Dick's future be taken into a video game's visual notion of the future and yet remain true to the story? For les gens, Philip K. Dick, uh, for most people, apart from his fans, Philip K. Dick was more related to the universe of films like Blade Runner. We therefore felt forced to stick to this sort of visual universe. However, we tried to keep the originality of the universe described by Dick in this book and not to go into the pure science fiction mode. This novel was written at the end of the 60s, and most of the descriptions contained therein are very marked by this time. Let's say that the global look of Ubik, as described in the book, is closer to Starsky and Hutch than it is to Blade Runner or Total Recall. We prefer to follow the trend set by Blade Runner and Total Recall, which is what really symbolizes Philip K. Dick's universe now. That is to say, a dark and somber future, somewhat cynical, and which is really suggestive of a future. What happens is that the player is captain of a team which he must lead in a war. Some of his agents have physical powers, whilst others are doted with psychic powers. He leads them in a war of industrial counter-espionage, such as found in the universe of traditional cyberpunk. There is, however, an original side to this story, as at a particular moment it seems to go topsy-turvy, as in Total Recall. That is that we can no longer distinguish between reality and illusion. There are 110 characters which can be used to interact with one another as well as 10 to 15 places dotted about the world and even out of the world. All this must be discovered by the player. Like in all self-respecting games, we divided the work up methodically. The first phase of the work was the pre-production phase. That's the moment where we try to decide what it is that we can do once we have a license for a work such as Ubik. What can we do with such rich material? We take decisions, we say the game could be like this or like that, we get ideas. We could design a strategy game. But then why not add some adventure? Briefly, we confront all our ideas. At the end, we have a Bible called Game Design, from which we did not deviate by one iota. In other words, what was written two years ago is what the player can now discover and experiment. When we conceived the game, we said to ourselves that the biggest challenge would be to construct an artificial intelligence that would be like a real intelligence. This hasn't really been done up until now. I don't mean to say that it is us that have invented it, but we really wanted to create something whereby the player could say that his characters have their own lives and are not mere puppets of the player. We worked a great deal on this, especially with Eric Simon, who helped a lot. It was he who created the main features and we got to the state where the artificial intelligence was so developed that when we started the game, we had hardly time to click on the mouse that the characters were already behaving spontaneously. They started shooting at one another, curing one another, escaping, looking for the best passageways. All of this was happening without one's needing to play. So, finally, we ended up with a film, which isn't so bad since Philip K. Dick's work adapts itself so wonderfully to cinema. However, since we were supposed to be constructing a game, we were a little bit disappointed. We understood that we had gone too far. We had to go back to the drawing board and render our characters a little less intelligent. We were really very fortunate to have such fantastic music in Ubik. Eric Loss, our musician, came to see us one day. We had never heard of him. He said that he had heard that we were creating the game based on Ubik and that he was a great fan of Philip K. Dix and that he absolutely wanted to work on the project even for free. So we said, 
Well, go ahead and show us what you can do. He made us listen to several pieces of his music, and if ever you hear it, you'll understand why he got the job. It's so much in the groove of the game. It's dark and somber, somewhere between a requiem from the Middle Ages and science fiction action film music. He really did a super job. I composed the music based on choices as close as possible to film style orchestral music. I'd like to call it Gothic Orchestral Trash. Before knowing that I was going to work on the project, I had already read the novel in which there are several little musical references. For example, when Joe Cheap, the main character, goes into the moratorium, there's a little phrase where he says that he can hear the Liberame by Verdi in the distance. This suggested something of a classical orchestral nature to me and gave me a direction just like that. I didn't even have to think about it. It was obvious to me that it would be orchestral music. All orchestral sounding music is done on home studio equipment, i.e. synthesizer, sampler, computer, all connected to one another on the MIDI norm and everything else as far as electronical bric-a-brac is concerned. However, I have also tried to incorporate as much as possible acoustic instruments so as to confer a human and lively dimension to the ensemble. Even if I still consider that the machines should be considered as instruments in their own right, just as a piano or a guitar, since there are people who are able to fully express themselves on such machines. Take rappers, for example. One could communicate all kinds of feelings on these machines, if they're used in a humane fashion. If one lets the machine do everything, one is left with a square, cold, computer-type music, which is exactly what I wanted to avoid. I tried to keep a warm and human dimension by trying to forget that 80% of the result was created by machines. Rediscovering humanity, forgetting the machine, these are also part of what the characters believe in. In this world besieged by anxiety, time is blown to pieces, and as if through holes in a theatrical set, the true meaning of Ubik seeps in. So what is Ubik? Philip K. Dick gives us a partial response. I am Ubik. Before the universe was born, I am. I made the suns, I made the planets. I created all living beings and the places they inhabit. I brought them there, I put them there. They go where I want, they do what I say. I am the word and my name is never spoken. Nobody knows my name. If this message is unclear to you, prepare for the year 2019 in a game called Ubik.